Hey guys, welcome to the Deep South Kitchen. I'm Wanda and today I've been asked by Darlene at Super at 60 to be a part of a collaboration called Women in Faith. Women that are unashamed to talk about their faith and it's the title I guess is a church supper. Kind of smells like a church supper around here y'all and it brought back a lot of memories of my childhood and church and then raising my children in church all kinds of things throughout my life church suppers we just really didn't have the church suppers when I was little it was called dinner on the ground so let's talk about it let's talk a little bit about faith and what faith is and somewhere in the middle there's gonna be a recipe guys as a child my parents took me to church all the time we were Baptist. We went to a little church out in the country, and it was the little traditional white building, you know, wood building. Um, when you walked in the door, you were in the sanctuary. There was no bathroom. Eventually, they had added on to the back of it four Sunday school rooms, but no bathroom in this building, uh, no kitchen, no nothing. No pastor study. I mean, nothing but four Sunday school rooms in the back and the sanctuary. And the bathrooms, there was one on each side of the property. Women's over here, men's over here. They were outhouses. So that tells you that I went to a very primitive church. Eventually, they tore the old building down, built a new church with bathrooms on the front and Sunday school rooms in the back and, you know, the whole nine yards and even to this day, they've added a nice kitchen and dining area and all that to it. So it started out very primitive and it's evolved over the years. But we had, back then, we had what we called dinner on the ground. Not too many people know what dinner on the ground is anymore. But it was a big deal to us. Uh, twice a year, we had revival. And that's when a preacher would come in and preach, usually morning and night. We had services uh, five days, Monday through Friday, morning at 10 o'clock, night at 6, 7, whatever time they set, and we did this twice a year. It was called Revival. And on Sunday before Revival started, we had dinner on the ground. Darlene, over at Super at 60, um, sent me the message about this collaboration, and she said, you have the main dish, and I'm like, oh boy. Well, when we had dinner on the ground, the biggest thing back then was fried chicken. But I don't fry a whole lot, and I'm thinking, well, i got to think outside the box because I don't want to do fried chicken for the main dish. And my mom always cooked fried chicken, plus other ladies did. We were in a church that probably, there were probably about 40 families, and several of them would bring the main dish, which would be chicken, ham, whatever, something like that. And then you would have some that would bring veggies. My mom always took potato salad. That was one of her biggies. And she would take some peas or beans or something like that. Um, they would take a bread. Some of them might make their bread. Some of it might be cornbread. Some of it might be a loaf of bread, I guess. So we had a, quite a variety of stuff. And then desserts. Oh my, the desserts. The desserts were fabulous. And we always had tables set up outside and we always at ate outside. If it rained, then there was enough people in the community that everybody divided up and went to houses, ate and came back. We had a service after we ate on Sunday. So it was always a big deal. And us kids got to see our friends almost all day. So it was a win-win for us. I remember this one lady, she brought spaghetti. A big pot of spaghetti several times and I just thought it was the best spaghetti I'd ever eaten my mom made spaghetti but it was really really plain my daddy didn't like a lot of spices so our spaghetti was just pretty much on a plain plain level she was the mother of three of my friends she brought spaghetti and I just one day I said I gotta know how you make spaghetti Danny is gluten-free so he doesn't eat noodles so I had to improvise we have lots and lots of zucchini. So I make zucchini spaghetti bake for my 
main dish. The whole point of this collab is for women to be unashamed to speak on their faith and talk of their faith. In the world today, only certain people are allowed to talk, it seems like. They want to shut down others. Um, when we were growing up, it was nothing to to speak to anybody of your faith and talk about your church and, and what your church was doing. And now you can't even hardly bring church up before people look at you and just walk away. Or they say, look, you're violating my rights. You, you can't speak about that. I don't believe that. We didn't think of it, or I didn't, growing up and, and throughout my children's lives, I didn't think of it as I was trying to convert anybody. When I talked to them, I talked to them like I would be talking to you, saying, you know, look, this is what I believe, and, and uh, this is what we're doing at our church, and stuff like that. And we always had a healthy conversation. To me, that was important. They would tell me what they believe, and we would just discuss it, and we never got mad, we never argued, and at the end of the day, we just parted ways and came back as friends always. I had many friends that were different religions, and we just loved talking about God. We love to, to discuss it, regardless of our other uh, thoughts in religion. God was God. When I was thinking about this collab, um, the thought of fear is what came about. Number one, I'm not afraid to speak on faith, but the fear of condemnation, that's, that's something that people steer away from. They don't want to speak on faith because somebody's going to get on to them. Somebody's going to put them down. And God says, I did not give you uh, a spirit of fear. And so we shouldn't give in to the spirit of fear. We should embrace it and put our eyes on the Lord and say, show me what to say. I had to do that because I wanted to get some in the way sometimes. Today, the shirt created with a purpose. Um, Proverbs 16.4 we're going to read it in a minute it just kind of hit me and I'm like you know I was created for a purpose what was that purpose and a lot of you think you, all, you may probably already knew and no I didn't know what my purpose was I never have I lived my life on faith I accepted Jesus as my savior when I was 23 years old I was raised in a church believing in God I always believed in God, and I could not understand from the time I was 13 till I was 23 how come I was not saved. I did not feel like a saved person. Um, I, I, in my mind, I battled. I said, you know, I believe in God, so why am I not saved? What is the purpose? What is wrong with me? Why, why do I not get what everybody else gets? And uh, that was tough for me because I was missing the point. I, I was a good girl. I did not do all the things that most everybody else did. If they preached against something, I, I didn't do that. So why, why was I saved? I was seeing the wrong side. I, I thought belief was what you had to have. Um, because lots of times they'll say, believe in God and you will be saved. And believe is one thing, but faith is something else. Two totally different things. And it took me until I was 23 to see the difference. I believed in God. 99% of the people, if they're honest with themselves, believe there is a God. But to have faith is something totally different. And when I understood faith, that's when it started clicking. Had a preacher talk about faith and he said, most people don't understand faith versus believing. And he pointed out that we were all sitting on benches. And he said, you had faith that bench was going to hold you or you would not have sat down on it. He said, that's faith. And it hit me. We have faith in a lot of things. But we don't have faith in the one thing that will keep us safe through our years in our life and that night I turned my life over to Christ and I just exercised faith and when you say exercise faith has to be 
worked. It has to move. It has to be used all the time because faith without works is dead. Most people don't understand that either. You have to use it religiously. It has to be used. Um, a lot of people say that if you don't use it, you lose it. Um, that could be some truth to that even with faith. I know there's times that if it weren't for faith, I would not have made it through. I was in a marriage for 30-something years um, where there was alcohol abuse. Um, it was tough for me on a daily basis to continue life and not let that get me down. The only thing I had was faith. I thought, God, if you can get me through day to day. I functioned as a wife. I functioned as a mother, and I functioned as a member of society, but inside I was tore up, and I knew God had a purpose. At some point, I was created with a purpose, and I knew that, and lots of times self gets in the way, and I tried to put myself into positions to create a purpose for myself, and that doesn't work too well, but God used me through the years in a church. I've been in several churches, but in one church in particular, to be the piano player, the VBS director. Um, I was on a couple of committees, and in the choir, I can't sing. Y'all don't even think about it. I can sing. I can play the piano a little bit. Uh, not that good at that either, but I enjoyed my time doing that. Let's read from the King James Version, Proverbs 16.4. The Lord hath made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. That was something that I guess is kind of tough, that people don't get God created everything, even people, and some are created for evil. He speaks of it off and on through the Bible. But we should be a people that's created for him, to worship him, to praise him, to give him honor, and in our busy, busy lives, we tend to forget that over and over and over again. But when things happen, and there's so much happening right now, that create fear. And as people, we sit and go, oh my goodness. But if we keep looking at that fear, that fear factor, because almost everything you see is trying to create fear in you, especially a lot of these um, thumbnails and things like that, they're fear factors. And you give in to that fear. You click that button because you want to know. You want to know. You keep clicking that button. You keep listening to one right after the other person telling you things that are going on in this world. And it is good to know that things are going on. But it's not good to dwell on it. Knowing it and preparing for it is one thing God says to prepare for what is coming. To prepare your soul and your house. When you dwell on fear, it increases fear and all imaginations of evil. The more you dwell on it, the more you think in your mind, what ifs? And you create more things. That's evil. That is not of God. And so we shouldn't dwell on the evil. We should exercise faith because we are created with a purpose. Our purpose is to praise and honor God, to raise our families to praise and honor God. There's coming a time in this world where you're going to be asked, do you believe in God? Which side are you going to be on? Are you going to be hungry enough that you say, no, I don't know God, I don't know, you know. Are you going to say, I believe in God. I, my faith is in my Lord. Which way are you going to go? Proverbs 16, 6. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. And by fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. And this godly fear... You should reverence God. God, we don't understand this in our society, but mercy and truth 
Iniquity is purged. Iniquity is sin. It is the evilness in this world. Mercy and truth. Truth, speaking the truth of what is true. Nowadays, when we speak the truth, evil says it's wrong. They will not allow us to speak what we have been taught all our lives as truth in this book. And from just simple nature tells us the truth, but they're twisting it. They're twisting. We were told that good will become evil, evil will become good. But by mercy and truth, iniquity will be purged. And it says, by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. Once you know the Lord, once you have that faith, you can believe all day. But once you put your faith and say, God, show me where I'm headed, instead of saying, I'm going to go that way, or I'm going to go that way, say, God, show me where you want me to go. And the more you read this, the more you will get in tune with the Holy Spirit. Don't leave the Holy Spirit out. There is a Holy Spirit that, that helps you when you're reading this to understand. It'll give you tidbits you, that'll come to your mind and you go, oh, I've read that 50 times and I didn't get that. But today I, I get this, this reasoning behind it. This is Proverbs 16, 16. How much better is it to get wisdom than gold and to get understanding rather to be chosen than silver? Everybody's hollering, buy gold, buy silver, buy gold, buy silver. Here it says to get wisdom and understanding. Wisdom and understanding. Not fear of what's going to happen in the world. This book tells you what's going to happen. Danny's talked to you guys. He tells you, go back in here, and it tells you. Daniel, Ezekiel, Jeremiah. You go back into Revelations, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. You can find out what's going to happen. That's all you need to know. It's going to be bad toward the end. Is the end here? Who knows? It could be. Could not be. We could have a few more years. We could see the Lord tomorrow. Who knows? Fear. People are afraid of dying. We're all going to die. Simple fact of life. But we should live till we die. You should live your life showing the Lord in your life before you pass on. Whether it's tomorrow or whether it's 10 years from now or 40 years from now or you live to be 120. And today my purpose here was to talk a little bit about fear, to talk a little bit about faith, and to show you you were created with a purpose. Not everybody's going to be a preacher or a teacher. Not everybody's going to be on YouTube. Not everybody's going to a church. You have people in your space that you are going to be held accountable for. If you did not talk to people that walk in your door and not be pushy, just sometimes something like have a blessed day or something like say if someone comes to your door and delivers a package and you say thank you may God bless you for delivering my package safely you know something like that opens a door if it opens a door and they respond you have a conversation if they say you're welcome and walk off the doors closed it's that simple Maybe you were created to pray for others. Sometimes the most important things in the world is to have prayer warriors. And to have prayer warriors you don't even know about. Danny and I have a huge group of prayer warriors. Ladies and men that know God. That can reach the throne of God. And that is so important in this day and time. Because we could not continue to do what we do without the prayers of others. And we're blessed that each one of you pray for us daily, lift us up, that we can do what we do. Created with the purpose. We are all created. What is your purpose? I don't know. I can't tell you. You have to look into the Word, find what you were created for, and 
go for it. Talk to people. Don't be ashamed to speak what you think. Always, always pray for those that you know don't want to listen. Ask that a door be opened. If it's not opened, it's not time. Don't try to force that door open because sometimes forcing a door open shuts it even harder and locks it. I told you in the beginning there was a recipe in here somewhere. Um, I chose spaghetti because my friend's mother did spaghetti. Huge pot of spaghetti, brought it, and we had spaghetti as a main dish lots of times at our uh, functions. Because of the way Danny and I eat, I flipped it a little bit. So mine is a zucchini spaghetti bake. I started with fresh zucchini. I cut the ends off and I used a salad master cutter to shred the zucchini. Now this salad master is 30 plus years old. I put some of the um, zucchini on a tray so that I can put it in my freeze dryer and um, freeze dry it for future uses because zucchini has so many um, recipes that I can use it in the future. The zucchini I had left over, I added salt to and I covered it with the plate and let it sit for about an hour. This draws the water out of the zucchini. While I was waiting, I chopped up an onion and I minced some garlic. Then I drained the water from the zucchini. The ground beef I'm using today is some I canned in 2018, and then I'm using tomatoes and onions that I canned in 2021. The peppers and onions, I put in a little bit of oil and sauteed them down until they were kind of translucent and a little bit of brown around the edges. I then set them aside. In the same skillet, I heated ground beef just so I could drain off the liquid that was in it. Then I added the peppers and onions back and the garlic. I added some salt and pepper. The tomatoes. and a little bit of Italian seasoning. I decided to add some canned carrots. One thing I do when I make a, a spaghetti sauce is I take some of my canned carrots and I chop them up and I throw them over in the sauce. That just gives it a little bit of vegetables in my spaghetti sauce. We let this heat for about five minutes. I have a very deep dish baking pan where I put my zucchini in it. I mix in the sauce. I covered it with foil. And I baked it at 375 for approximately 30 to 40 minutes. All I'm doing is getting the zucchini done because all the rest is done. When it comes out of the oven, it smells like spaghetti. It tastes like spaghetti. 
and lots of people would not notice that it is not spaghetti and I serve it with Parmesan sprinkled on top. Today I want to thank Darlene at Super at 60 for inviting me to be a part of this collab, to be unashamed, to speak out about my faith. Faith over fear, guys. You have to exercise that faith to overcome fear. I pray that each one of you will find your purpose in life and that you will exercise your faith, that you will speak to those around you. And if the door is opened, carry on a conversation. If not, that door is closed. Just pray for that person. So check out all the ladies that are in the collab. I'm going to link it in the description below and put the playlist in the cards in the top corner here. And you can check them all out, see what they have to say, see what they're cooking. You'll get a variety of recipes along with a little bit about each one of these women's faith. Thank you guys from Deep South Homestead.